Welcome to Health Naturally. My name is Paul Gert. I'm a licensed acupuncturist and natural health practitioner of 16 years. The aim of the show is to bring you a wide variety of health topics and introduce you to area practitioners so you can find out who they are and what they do. Tonight's show is on neuropathy. Neuropathy is a collection of disorders that occurs when nerves of the peripheral nervous system, the part of the nervous system outside of the brain and spinal cord, are damaged. The condition is generally referred to as peripheral neuropathy. It is most commonly due to damage to nerve axons. Neuropathy usually causes pain and numbness in the hands and feet, can result in traumatic injuries, infections, metabolic disorders, and exposure to One of the most common causes of neuropathy is in some cases, autonomic neuropathy can affect controllably the system health, blood vessels, and other organs. Pain from peripheral neuropathy is often described as a tingling or burning sensation. It can no specific length of time, and it can be the symptoms often improve with time, especially if the neuropathy has an underlying condition that can be cured. The condition is often associated with poor nutrition, a number of diseases, and social requirements. But in many cases, it can be no reason, and it's called idiopathic neuropathy. In the United States, about 20 million people suffer from neuropathy. Over half of that is the patient's own physical condition. The most common form of neuropathy is symmetrical, peripheral neuropathic neuropathy, which mainly affects the feet and legs on both sides of the body. Which causes neuropathy? 30% of neuropathy is due to diabetes. In fact, about 50% of people with diabetes develop some type of neuropathy. The remaining cases of neuropathy, called acquired neuropathy, have several possible causes, including chronic muscle pressure on the nose, occupational fracture, fracture, or heavy commotion, such as heart and IC joints, nutritional problems, and vitamin deficiency, often from a lack of B vitamins. Alcoholism through poor dietary habits and vitamin deficiency. Autoimmune diseases such as lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and cancer are also known. Tumors, which often cross up against nerves. Other diseases and infections such as kidney disease, liver disease, Lyme disease, HIV or AIDS, or an interactive thyroid, and hypothyroidism. Inherited distress rates, like amyloid polyneuropathy. Poison exposure and toxins such as heavy metals and such medications can cause the kidneys. What are the symptoms of neuropathy? Neuropathy symptoms depend on several factors, chiefly where the affected nerves are located and which type of nerve is built up, motor structure, and other methods. Several types of neuropathy affect all three types of nerves. Some neuropathy suddenly arise while other tumors gradually over the course of healing. Motor nerve damage usually leads to symptoms that affect muscles, such as muscle weakness, cramps, spasms. It is not uncommon for this type of neuropathy to lead to a loss of balance and coordination. Patients may find it difficult to walk or run, feel like they have heavy limbs, stumble, or tire painful. Damage to arm movement can make it difficult to do routine tasks like carry bags, open jars, or turn doorbells. Sensory nerve damage can cause various symptoms such as impaired sense of stability, tingling, numbness, pinching, and tightening. Pain from this neuropathy is often described as burning, freezing, or electric lights, and many report a sensation of burning and visible to the wild right body. These sensations tend to be worse at night and become painful or severe. On the contrary, sensory nerve damage will lead to a lessening of the absence of sensation when nothing at all is felt. Autonomic nerve damage affects internal organs and involuntary functions and can lead to abnormal blood pressure and heart rates, reduced ability to perspire, constipation, bladder dysfunction, diarrhea, incontinence, sexual dysfunction, and emphysema, and symptoms of sleep. How is neuropathy diagnosed? The standard diagnostic process begins with a full medical history with physical and neurological exams that will examine some things like the muscle strength and tightness, the ability to feel sensation, and constant coordination. Blood tests are also frequent in order for doctors to measure levels of vitamin C levels. Other common tests include urinalysis, thyroid function tests, and 
Welcome, Dr. John Hayes, in the studio with us. John, welcome. Thanks, Paul. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself and your practice. Sure. I've, uh, I'm a chiropractic physician. I've been in uh, private practice since uh, a long time, since 1981. <laughs> I graduated from the National College of Health Sciences in Illinois in 1980. They opened my practice in Norwell, uh, and I've been there since uh, May of 1981. Wow. And, uh, you know, in that time, I continued my education. I graduated as a chiropractic physician, went on to do postgraduate work in uh, orthopedics, uh, then nutrition, and uh, ultimately the reason we're here today is the treatment of peripheral neuropathy. Tell everybody, uh, tell everybody what neuropathy is sure. and uh, what you do at your clinic. Sure. sure. Okay. Well, a neuropathy is the word that uh, doctors use when patients have issues with their nerves. In other words, their neuro means nerve, of course, passing means something gone wrong. And at its simplistic, most simplistic level, that's what neuropathy is. And the neuropathy is a very common disorder, unfortunately. It afflicts well over 22 million Americans. In fact, if you count some of the other things in there, things like shingles mm -hmm. and other painful nerve disorders, the numbers get much closer to 100 million patients. So it's a huge, huge health problem. You know, we see it in uh, patients that uh, have diabetes. We see it in uh, patients that have undergone chemotherapy. We see it as a result of toxins, mold. I mean, you name it. There's well over 100 different known causes, and they think there's probably some unknown causes too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so what are when somebody comes to you in clinic, which uh, we'll see later, we'll take mm -hmm. a visit to your sure. clinic. Sure. Um, describe some of the things that you do to treat neuropathy. Well, the first, the first thing, Paul, and this, this is really important. You and I have had this talk before. The first thing is to is to do a very, very thorough uh, intake, if you will, mm -hmm. on each patient as an individual, because there's so many different things in the background that can cause neuropathy. Uh, in many, many patients, uh, we find that their neuropathy is a result of several different things combined. For example, if the patient is a cigarette smoker, uh, takes statin medications, uh, is over 45 or 50 years of age, uh, might be 20 pounds overweight, those things in and of themselves are enough to cause neuropathy. And then you throw a disease on top of that, you know, like cancer or diabetes, and then that result is they have this health problem. Well, the most important way we can help treat patients is to best identify the cause because, right. you know, if somebody is consuming something that might have caused a neuropathy or has been exposed to something ex 